Okay, so this video is going to be talking a bit about vector subtraction. So what does vector subtraction actually mean? With vector addition, we can kind of visualise things. If I had multiple forces acting on an object, um, and I added all those forces up, where would the resultant force be acting? With vector subtraction, if I've got two vectors, let's say A and B, oops, um, and I want to find the, the difference between them, B minus A, what does that actually mean? Well, vector subtraction is really useful when we want to find the change in a vector. So let's start, um, let's think about where we might use this. If we think about the change in velocity, such as if we're finding the acceleration, how would we find the change in velocity? Well, you'd find the final velocity and you subtract the initial velocity. Well, we know that both, both um, velocities are vectors. So what we're actually doing in finding V minus U is subtracting u from v. So this is where we use vector subtraction. Uh, we could also use it if we want to find change in force, acting on a body, change in momentum, or any vector that we might come across. So we're going to start with a little example here, um, just to give us a bit of context for this. So I've got a wall, um, and I've got a ball which is initially moving at a speed of 3 metres per second towards the wall, hits the wall, bounces off, and rebounds with another speed of three meters per second. Okay, so part one here, what is the change in speed of the ball? Well, clearly speed is a scalar, so um, in the context of this question, um, the speed has not changed. It started at three meters per second, it finished at three meters per second, so we have zero change in speed there. However, with the change in velocity, velocity is a vector, so in this case, it was initially going at a velocity of 3 metres per second, so that might mean that the... Um, so my initial speed is um, 3. My final speed, in, as it's moving in the opposite direction, would be minus 3. So the difference between those, the change in speed there, would be 6 metres per second. If you... Um, for comparison, if you go from 3 degrees Celsius to minus 3 degrees Celsius, what's my change in temperature there would be 6 degrees Celsius. Um, as we're talking about um, a change in velocity, it's still a vector, so it's going to be 6 metres per second to the left is going to be my change in speed, change in velocity. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples just to get our head around what's going on. So, as we mentioned, subtracting vectors um, is always useful when finding the change in a vector. So, e.g. velocity, momentum, force, anything like this. Okay, so let's take an example here. So let's say I've got a little ball, a ball on a string, rotating around a point. So this currently is moving in this direction and it's got a momentum of two kilogram meters per second. After it's gone through a quarter of a rotation, it's up here, and now it's got a momentum in this direction of two kilogram meters per second. So the ball's moving around that path there. So what we want to find is, what is the ball's change in momentum? So how are we gonna find this? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a little technique here for how we can um, do vector subtraction. So what I want us to do is to start off with um, my final momentum. Equals. So in this case, it's going to be this vector here. Two, meters per two kilogram meters per second in that direction. My initial um, 
momentum is two meters, two kilogram meters per second in this direction. So if I want to find change in momentum, how am I going to do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find P final minus my initial momentum. Just like with change in speed, final speed minus, sorry, change in velocity, final velocity minus initial velocity. Mathematically, I'm sure you'll all agree that putting a plus sign in there makes no difference mathematically. And we can make use of that to come up with a neat way of um, solving these problems. So we're going to go back up here now, P final, P initial. So inside my brackets here, I've got minus P initial. So what, what's that going to be? Um, well, that's if I want to find minus the negative of my initial velocity, well, that's going to be the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So here I have the negative of my initial momentum. So what I've shown in this part is that if I add my final momentum vector with the negative of my initial momentum vector, I can find the difference between those. So what we're going to do is we're going to add those two vectors together. So I'm going to take this guy, just move it down here, and I'm going to add it, just like we showed before, to this one here. We've got these two arrows, and we go from the start to the end, and this red arrow is going to be my change in momentum, my final momentum minus my initial momentum. So just like with the addition problems we were doing before, we need to find the magnitude of that red arrow. So that's going to be 2 squared plus 2 squared, square rooted, which will give me 2.8 kilogram meters per second. And as it is a vector, I need to find the direction. Um, you can easy, either use inverse tan, but as both those sides are the same length, we know that's going to be 45 degrees. Um, so th that is how we find the change in momentum there. Now, um, it's just worth pointing out at this stage that if, if I were to add this one and this one to add my final and initial momentum, the magnitude of that arrow would be exactly the same. I'm still doing square root of 2 squared plus 2 squared. However, the direction will be different. And so that's, that's key to understanding this. So we're going to have a little go at a question here. Pause the video if you want to have a go at this for yourself. Car goes into a corner with a velocity of 10 meters per second east. So with all of these, start off with a, um, a little sketch. So my initial velocity is 10 meters per second to the east. It leaves the corner with a velocity of 8 meters per second heading south. Find the car's change in velocity. So change in velocity is going to be given by v minus u. So I've got v and u here. What I need to find is minus u. So I'm going to move that over here. And minus u is going to be exactly the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. So now, now that I've got minus u, I can add that vector to my velocity vector. Let's do it down here so we can see a bit more clearly. Okay, so I've making my vector polygon here. If I go from the start to the end, this is going to be my change in velocity vector with a bit of Pythag. And that's going to tell me the magnitude of that value of that um, change in velocity, which should give me 12.8 meters per second. And I need to find an angle. Um, so I can do 
let's find this angle here. It doesn't really matter which one I choose. So we're going to find inverse tan of 0.8, which will give me 39 degrees. So um, to summarize this vector stuff, when we talk about vector addition, that's very useful in finding the resultant multiple vectors, whether that's resultant for setting on an object or my final displacement after I've gone through um, multiple different um, individual displacements. Vector subtraction, on the other hand, is very useful when we talk about the change in a particular vector.